and today we're making history. 20 years ago, Dietrich Mateschitz rewrote the script of motorsports with a team that's become the forever rebels of Formula One. The racing establishment wrote them off as just a fizzy drinks company, but the bubbles never burst for Oracle Red Bull Racing. As we launch this 20th season, what we're celebrating is a culture, a spirit and an attitude that's changed Formula One forever. Let's take a look at those last 20 years of doing it the Red Bull way. Another victory lap for Max Verstappen, who is on his way to win his 34th Grand Prix since Bahrain 2022. Red Bull have a different way of operating with the emphasis on people being themselves. When we come together as a team, we like to feel unstoppable and let people know where we stand. Do something that no one else has done before it makes us feel like a family. Welcome to my world, the world of Red Bull. When you look at some of the other projects that Red Bull are involved in, the extreme sports, we're tremendously proud to carry the Red Bull logo. It's become iconic in Formula One. If you have a will and if you have an idea, exciting things are possible. You know, I didn't want to let him down. And did I feel ready? Probably not. When I first joined Red Bull, huge change culturally. People saw Red Bull as a party team. They wanted to do things differently. You know when something just feels right and it just... There was a natural chemistry from those very first interactions. You know, are they completely mad? Is it just parties or are they serious? You know, who's this kid, Christian Horner? And take a massive risk. What a ride. Let's add a stunt. And then we're third, and that was the first podium, you know, for the team, so it was a massive achievement. Right. So I, don't know, I used to watch that, David. That looks yes, like ma'am. Sebastian Vettel went right into the side of Mark Webber. How do you read that? Yeah, I think that Mark was holding position. It's as com- uncomfortable as it is to call that between those two guys. What the f- are we doing here? Mark is too slow. Get him out of the way. This is silly, Seb. Come on. <laughs> Sebastian Vettel, you are the world champion! Thank you, boy. We have to remember these days. There's no guarantee that they will last forever. Gonna get it while you can? Yeah! <laughs> well, I need a drink. What the f We may have a bit of a problem. Oh, I got damage, got damage! Oh, fire! Oh. Put himself in a great position. Well, it's... Oh, could have done that after that one. This is how we do it, man. We shut the path, and we work hard. This is the Mexican way. And for the first time ever, a Mexican driver on the podium in his home race. Check this out.
Max, you have been absolutely mighty this year. You've led over a thousand laps, 19 victories. That's history. You have just overtaken Ascari. That's a record from 1952, mate. Yeah, we did that. It's been an absolute privilege watching you drive this car that's been built by a team of brilliant people. <laughs> wins 19 Grand Prix in a single season. Literally ludicrous domination. You got killed a, a rocket ship of the car. <laughs> Please welcome two men who have been a part of the story from the very start. CEO and team principal of Oracle Red Bull Racing, Christian Horner. Oh yeah, and we've got Oracle Red Bull Racing legend, David Coulthard. <laughs> Gentlemen, it's great to see you both. And as we just watched that, it's been quite the journey you've been on as a team. Now, Christian, I'll come to you first because you're now CEO and team principal of arguably one of the world's most successful high performance companies. But it all started back when you were just 31 years old, no former experience in Formula One. I mean, reflecting on that as a journey, how did it all start? Well, it started, uh, as you say, 20 years ago and looking at some of those videos, we're all looking a little younger there. It's been quite a journey, and uh, you know what we've crammed into 20 years has been been phenomenal. Some some highs and lows along the way, but an awful lot of highs, and uh, um, yeah, it's been very special. Many highs, which came from you, of course, David. Going back to 2004, when you first joined the team, what made you want to work with Christian and Dietrich? Well, I'd known Christian actually from from Lower Motorsports. I'd seen what he'd done with his uh, Arden Racing team. But the team that was formerly here, I, I'd already decided I wasn't going to race for them because I just didn't believe in the future investment. But when I met the Mr. Marischitz, it was absolutely clear this was more than just a branding exercise. This was an absolute commitment. And in that very first meeting, he said, our goal is to win the World Championship. And it, it really took me back because I'm thinking, we haven't even got to the first race. Never mind got about building a team that can compete against you know, your Ferraris and the likes. But his vision, his commitment, Christian's leadership, along with all of the great technical men and women that have uh, been part of this journey, has just been incredible. So when we started, it was a few hundred people in one factory down at the bottom of, of this road. Now we've got the whole campus and, what, 1,500 people or so employed? And counting, yeah. yeah. Such an incredible journey. And, of course, it was clear from the off that you guys meant business because in your first race, sorry, Jaguar, to throw you in here, but in the first race, they scored more points than Jaguar had in the entire previous season, just saying. And then shortly thereafter, of course, this happened. So talk us through that moment where you got your first podium with Red Bull. Yeah, well, Monaco is a circuit that I always went well. So I was confident that even though we were still a developing team, that there was a, an opportunity in a track like that to get a result. So I, I was convinced we were capable of making it uh, certainly into some good point scoring position. But a podium, of course, is uh, a landmark for the team. Look, I mean, it was the first trophy and it's, it's very proudly in our, in our cabinet. You know, and, you know, David was such an important part of the early part of Red Bull Racing. And again... Here we are 20 years with, it, with him still associated and working with the brand. Absolutely. And so would you say that that was the moment that you really felt you'd arrived as a team? I think it was an important moment because, you know, that trophy represented, you know, what was to come. And it also represented that we were prepared to do things a little differently. Seeing David standing on a podium in front of Prince Albert in a Superman cape um, on Red Bull's first podium just showed that, you know, we were doing it differently. We were doing it the Red Bull way. Yeah, I think it's important to mention, actually, at that time, Formula One was quite a closed shop. You didn't go into the other teams. It was very much, you know, each team was its own entity. Red Bull opened the door to the paddock and said the other teams were welcome. And at first, you could see other team members sort of nervously walking up into the energy station thinking, is something going to happen? And then over time, it just changed the whole philosophy of Formula One. And the paddock is a much friendlier place because of it. Absolutely. And I know you credit a lot of this down to team culture. How important would you say that is in terms of success? It's everything. Uh, the men and women here in Milton Keynes, um, all the people behind the scenes. It's, it's out of these industrial buildings that uh, we've created some of the most incredible cars over the last you know, 19 seasons. And, and uh, the late nights, the hours, the, 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 the sacrifices that are made it's, it is a culture, it's a very inclusive culture, it's a team culture. For me, Formula One is 
the biggest team sport in the world. And without the people, you have nothing. And it's the people who are your single biggest asset. Absolutely. Now, we've spoken a lot about teammates and we've heard just how important the team is. So why don't we hear from some of the people who have all played their part in these very special 20 years? Right, Trying to hide your disappointment better than that, honestly. For <laughs> sake, what are we doing here? No, this line no. of questionings is appalling. We're done. Yes. Uh, is that yes. Right? Uh, let's get those in. There are rebels and characters throughout. There's so many of them. I mean, you can start with Vashe. He's got a few Pink Panther moves at some parties that I've seen in action. Yeah, yeah for sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, certainly Adrian, he does like a party. I've, I've seen him uh, have a good time on quite a few occasions. I'm, I can be a party animal. I don't think I'm the chief party animal. I can think of a lot bigger protagonists. He looks like a university professor, but get a Red Bull inside him, you know, he just takes off. It's great. Everybody feels like they can be a part of this team, so it's not like a separate them and us thing at all in Red Bull. It's like we're all a family and a team together. It has to be fun. You have to enjoy what you're doing. It's not a nine to five job in Formula One. It's a competition, it's a sport, and it's fantastic to see as we travel around the world the amount of support that the team enjoys in every country that we go to. Keep it warm. Very quickly, we established a culture and a culture that was inclusive, that, you know, that we were there to operate as a race team. You know, growing up within the team has been very nice. Of course, everyone has always been very supportive and we all always trusted each other. And I think that makes our relationship very special. Everyone is seeing how they can support the guy next to you. <laughs> Yeah, I think Red Bull just came across as a great place to work where there was kind of that fun, a bit young and energetic. He's a team product. He's never an individual product. You race as one team. It's vital, isn't it? You get different views, different ideas, different personalities. And how you choose them, how you develop them, and after he's developing you, how we make it together. Keep it raw. We are now joined by Group Chief Technology Officer of Oracle Red Bull Racing, AKA the GOAT of F1 Engineering. Please give it up for Adrian Newey. <laughs> Welcome, Adrian. So, as you've seen, we've been going through the journey of everyone, and I want to start off with you. Going back to 2004, you already had two decades of experience designing championship winning cars, both for teams which David drove for. So I have to ask you, was it a bit of a bromance going on that brought you to Red Bull? As it turns out, the three um, teams that David has driven for are exactly the same three teams as I've worked for. And so I've known David since he was a, a wee test driver, very young lad, in 1993, I think. Uh, he then moved to McLaren, I moved to McLaren a year after. He moved to, to Red Bull. Uh, and then really from there, things developed. And how excited were you, David, when you found out that Adrian was joining the team? Well, you know, Adrian has been incredibly successful through his entire career, even prior to Formula One. So when Christian first suggested that, you know, would Adrian be available? I, at that point, I was so immersed in trying to understand where we were as a team. I hadn't really given that consideration. But thankfully, he accepted the challenge and the invitation and uh, the team of people that he's built here has been proven out by the success. The thing that I really love about Adrian, as well as being obviously a creative chap, pretty handy when it comes to being at the drawing board because uh, for those who know Formula One closely, they'll know that Adrian still uses a pencil to design, but he's a racer and maybe he doesn't have the same racing success as Max Verstappen, but he has been out on the racetrack and he likes to keep it simple. I remember once, you know, going into great detail, explaining everything the car was doing on a lap and at the end of having given this long explanation, he went, what do you need to go faster? kept it simple. And then I went, well, understeer. And he went, okay, we'll work on the understeer. So out of all of this sort of, you know, uh, mess going on in my head about the journey around the racetrack, just focus on what you need to go quicker. And that simplicity has clearly been very successful for him and his team. Incredible. Now, Christian, of course, even the greatest teams go through challenging moments. And fast forwarding now to 2014, when Mercedes started to look a little bit unbeatable, how did you stay resilient as a team? Well, I think that, uh, you know, that was a testing period for the team, that uh, there was a big regulation change. Um, we'd gone from in enjoying huge success with Sebastian Vettel in those four consecutive world championships. And suddenly, for reasons beyond our control, we didn't have an engine that 
that could compete with the likes of um, you know what Mercedes had come up with. So suddenly it was about keeping the group together, keeping the team together, staying focused on uh, you know addressing the weak point and you know focusing on the things that we could control and the things that you know where we could be strong. And I think it was that team spirit, it was that togetherness that you know we didn't lose uh, you know key members of the team during that period, and we were able to win races every single year bar one until we got ourselves in a position with a competitive engine to suddenly then be able to go for a championship again. Now, we've spoken a lot about the past, but I know that Red Bull is a lot about the future and in particular backing young talent through the Red Bull Academy program, through Visa, Cash App, RB and Oracle Red Bull Racing. How important is it to you to bring in those fresh new names? Well, look, it's really exciting, and I think Red Bull have committed more to Formula One Academy than any other team in Formula One. And, you know, with uh, Oracle Red Bull Racing and Red Bull fielding cars and, you know, the Visa Cash App RB team also, you know, putting cars out, there's going to be a really strong Red Bull presence. And it's great to see, you know, these young girls getting a chance as the sport starts to embrace female racing. Absolutely. Well, on that note, let's have a look at that next generation of racing and some very exciting young female talent. I'm Emily De Hoost. And I'm Hamda al Kubesi, and I'm part of the Red Bull Academy program. A few years ago, I couldn't even think about being part of Red Bull. It was always a dream. F1 Academy is, is a big opportunity. My ambitions for next season is I want to win, I want to be champion, of course. I feel like Red Bull has done many amazing things, not just in motorsport. It's exciting to, to be part of it. Here they are in the flesh from the Red Bull Academy program. It's Hamza al Kabesi and Emily Dehoush. Yeah. All right, so Hamza, I'll come to you first as you'll be driving for F1 Academy for Red Bull Racing. Tell us a bit about your journey into motorsport and how this program is helping you with the next level of your career. Yeah, I got into karting when I was 12 years old and I fell in love with the sport immediately. And from there, we moved up the ladder into F4 and uh, finally into F1 Academy last year. We ended the season very strong in the top three. And now I'm part of the Red Bull family and couldn't be more grateful about this opportunity. Super excited. And Emily, what does it mean to you to be a part of the Red Bull family? And what was your journey into motorsport like? Well, I started karting when I was nine years old at the local karting track. And in 2021, I started to go in Formula cars. And last year I did F1 Academy and I won my first race in Barcelona. And this year I'm part of the Red Bull family and I'm really proud of that. Absolutely, you should be. It's an incredible achievement that you've both done. So Christian, looking at this, seeing the amazing young talent, how special does it feel to, to know that Red Bull are offering these incredible opportunities? Well, it's, it's a great initiative. And of course, Red Bull have got a long history with the uh, young driver program that obviously Helmut's done a, a great job of of running and, and nurturing, but again, this is a new element. And with uh, F1 Academy um, coming really on stream, supporting many Formula One races this year, it was the ideal time to step in and identify some young talent. Well, best of luck for this season. Thank you very much, Hamda and Emily. So I'm now back with Christian Horner, Adrian Newey, and Technical Director Pierre Wache. Welcome. <laughs> So now we are getting closer to that big reveal of the RB20. But before we do that, let's just take a moment to reflect on the RB19 because, I mean, it was a record-breaking car, such an incredible machine. So, Adrian, it'd be great if you could take us back to the drawing board. The, the 19 really was very much a, an evolution of the RB18 of 22. Last year's car really was a total surprise in terms of its dominance, I have to say, because we went into that winter of 22-23 thinking... Yeah, um, Sadie's won a race near the end in Brazil. Ferrari was still winning races. It was, it was still very tight. And on our side, we just concentrated on kind of improving some of the weaknesses of the, of the 22 car. And to our complete shock, really, by half season, it was becoming pretty evident that we had a, a march on them. Um, on our competitors. And Pierre, I know that you love that thrill of competition that we've just spoken about. Is that what helps you to constantly push to find an edge? Yes, for sure. But you know, this business of Formula One is the highest engineering competition in the world. But to have this success, you know, you, you need to have all departments in our business to be competing with the other team. Then the competition is at each level and for sure is making the motivation great. And Christian, what brief did you give these guys before they were designing? 
Well, look, that's not up to me, but uh, you know, the 23 car was really an update of the 22 car, and operationally, I think you know, Max was insane the way that he drove uh, last year. So to have achieved all of those records, you know, 22 victories, uh, 19 for Max, to have achieved first and second in the in the drivers' championship, something we'd never done before. Um, 15 straight victories in a row, breaking you know, McLaren's record from 1988. As the guy says, it's down to the people, and you need everybody in every department doing their bit to achieve, achieve those kind of results. It, you know, it was a magical year. What's, what's the changes for this year's car? You have to keep pushing. We've made some improvements to the car in all areas, um, mechanical, vehicle dynamics, and aerodynamics. Uh, is that enough? Who knows? We shall have to see. Watch this space. And Pierre, do you feel the same way? Yeah, we feel the same way. You know, just uh, we try to identify where we can gain performance on the car. Try to also understand where our weakness for the driver. And after it's just an evolution of what we did in the previous year. Oh, well, gentlemen, thank you so much. It's great to hear your insights. And now we've made it to that moment that we've all been waiting for, the big reveal. It's your first sight of a car that's going to be making fresh Red Bull history. So get ready for this. It's time to meet the RB20. She is in the flesh, the RB20, everyone. Joining us are the two drivers who will be behind the wheel of this beauty. Please welcome three-time and reigning world champion, Max Verstappen, and Mexico's mighty Minister of Defense, Checo Perez. But I want to come to you first. Firstly, congratulations on this incredible car. Could you tell us a bit more about it? Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, you can see it's an evolution of uh, of last year's car, but uh, you know, as our 20th version, um, the guys haven't been, you know, it's, it's not conservative, and you can see they've been quite aggressive in certain areas. Uh, you can see all the, all the men and women behind the scenes have been working very hard, and some of the detail on the car is absolutely exquisite. And Max, I'll come to you next. You had one of the most incredible, if not the most incredible season in Formula One last year. You broke your own record for the most race wins in a season and of course took your third world championship title. How excited are you to be driving the RB20? And are we confident that this is the car that will help you get your fourth title? Uh, I guess time will tell, but um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm excited. Um, it's always very nice to see a new car uh, come to life and how it's, you know, uh, built up with all, all the people around it uh, when you do your, your seat fit as well. And, uh, you know, for me at the moment, it's more about just looking forward to Bahrain, get testing, get comfortable with the car, understand what it needs and, um, yeah, just work from there. You know, it's such a, a long season that we just try to hit the ground running as, as good as we can, you know, really try to understand the car and, and then we'll see where we end up. And at Checo, you had a brilliant season. You helped Red Bull secure their first one too. Tell us, what are your ambitions for 2024? Yeah, I mean, I'm uh, just really happy to see. I've seen that the, the whole team has put together uh, an incredible concept. And um, I think now we just want to hit the, the track, you know, properly. But I believe that the, we've, we've made some, some good steps in the right direction. So it should be uh, another great season for the team. Absolutely. Well, we're all wishing you the very best of luck. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Christian, Checo, Max, another big round of applause to them. 
and of course to everyone at Oracle Red Bull Racing, not just for today, but for everything that they've done over the last 20 years as the forever rebels of Formula One. Now that's sadly all the time that we have for today. We're finishing off today with the past versus the future. The very first Red Bull car, the RB1, facing the new RB20 on track at Silverstone. It's the first iconic Red Bull moment of the new season, and trust me, there'll be plenty more to come in 2024. This, this is where it all started, yeah, Christian. Yeah, yeah. The golden oldie. Yeah. This scored points in its first ever Grand Prix. 2005. How old were you? Eight years old. This was state of the art, but they're basic now when you look at the modern Grand Prix car. Good to see that running again. Bring back some memories. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think it actually looks better than it did when we took it to the first race. I think we all do. <laughs> From RB1 to RB20, all the best for the year ahead.